Warning, this contains big spoilers for Super Mario Odyssey. If you thought collecting 500 power moons to actually get to the second secret kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey was hard enough, by the time you actually get to the darker side of the moon, you'll be thinking again. Even as you enter this new land, there are myriad characters waiting to wish you good luck, reminding you that they're proud of your bravery, which is just a warning as to how hard the darker side challenge is going to be. It's a test composed of 14, yes, 14 different sections, all geared to making sure you've honed all the skills you've acquired throughout the game. And trust us, each one is more testing than the last. Plus, if you die at any point, you'll have to come all the way back to the first stage again. But we've done it, we've beaten it, and we've got some tips that should help you beat it too and get that very special reward. Stage one, Goombas in the hat. The first stage will need you to stack Goombas in order to jump on a floating hat enemy equipped with rotating blades. You'll have to hit it twice in order to beat this section. Start by going to the right and collecting 10 Goombas. If you're finding it a bit tricky, stand still and wait until they come to you before you jump. Stay near the steps and wait for the hat to come to you, and then leap out of your Goomba stack to hit the hat for the first time. You'll then get put back into the central area. Be quick to fling your hat on another Goomba, and then jump over to the left hand side of the section to collect all the Goombas waiting there. You'll need around 10 again, so collect some from the top part if you need to, but then come back to the central point at the edge of the left hand side to get in a good position for the hat's return. Run towards it, avoiding the blades, and then jump on it again. You'll be rewarded with a three heart container that'll boost your health to six hearts, which are basically precious jewels on the darker side. You won't get any more until you get to stage four. Stage two, columns and poles. Shimmy around the right of the first two columns and then wall jump between the second and the metal fence until you can jump to the third. Move around to its right side and then wait a second until you can jump through the gap to the fourth column. Again, shimmy around to the right, jump to the fifth and then wall bounce between it and the fence until you can reach the sixth. And when you can, jump to the first red pole and then wait. The next three poles move up and down into the lava so you absolutely have to time your jump. Do the same thing again with the last two poles, swinging and waiting until they've gone into the lava and are coming back up before you move. Stage three, lava jumps. The next stage is, again, all about jumping and timing. You'll have to make your way across the lava by leaping between fast moving metal platforms with Bowser's face on them. Position yourself on the little jetty and wait for the highest platform to come along. They go in sets of three, moving from shortest to tallest. Then keep jumping forward, but only leaping when Mario's roughly level with Bowser's face on the platform. And then move to the right in order to climb onto the platform and get the heck out of this stage. Stage four, lava bubbles. Move into the first pool and then wait for the spikes to be perpendicular to you before you move into the second. Leap into the third as soon as the spikes pass above the second pool. You'll want to aim for the pool on your right for your fourth move and again, move as soon as the spikes have passed overhead. After that, it's just a case of leaping to the lava platform and dropping your flamey self into the cannon. Stage five, onions and platforms. If you need a health boost, move around to the right hand side of this whole platform while you're still a lava bubble to find a single heart. The first one is easy enough, but watch out for the hedgehogs that spawn in when you land. In the next bit, jump on the first block, then stretch out to leap onto the second as soon as you can. Here, wait by the bottom platform until it recedes and then move into the gap and extend as far as you can. Flick onto the bottom platform when it moves out, then extend all the way to push up the platform above before jumping onto the next mesh platform. Try to move quickly again as those hedgehogs are following you and then toddle your way over to the hole in the wall where you can see a gold ring. Stage six, ice and spikes. You'll change into Mario as soon as you hit the water, so swim fast up and over the steps before ground pounding into the gap on the other side. Wait for the water to rise and then position yourself by the bottom yellow dot. Don't worry, the spikes won't get you. But as soon as the water starts to drop again, immediately jump up and swim to the right and sink into that next gap. Jump up and move to the right to exit this section. Stage seven, Yoshi and flowers. The next stage sees you reunite with an old friend, Yoshi. Avoid the spikes and attach the right hand side of the column of the section ahead. Keep right until you get past the first spike creatures, then press Y to move to the left. Feel free to collect all the coins, but make sure you're back on the left hand side by the time the coins run out. 
Now it might seem scary, but just stay there and don't move until you've passed both spike chains. Then just leap to the platform once you've reached the very top of the conveyor belt. Hit the P button and then run along the flower bridge that appears. Remember though, that Yoshi runs faster than the bridge appears, so don't go too crazy. Continue along the path, ignoring the blocks again on your right. Jump on the first set of blocks and then to the second. Use Yoshi's flutter jump to get you to the third, highest set of blocks and then leap back onto the flower path beyond. Stage eight, metal blocks and lava. So jump out of Yoshi, jump down through the gold rings and fling your hat onto the scarecrow hanging under the metal box behind you. When the blocks start popping out, move over to the third column and wait under the gold rings. Wall jump from the right column to the left. Wait for the block above you to pop, wall jump between them and continue up until you reach a platform on the right. Keep on running through the gold rings until you get to the solid stone platform. Stage 9. Wings and Wind. Aim straight for the first air jet. Try not to adjust your direction between jets because you'll lose altitude and you'll need it all to get to the end. Change direction when you're in the jet stream and then only use the tiniest nudges on the joystick if you really have to realign. If the game really wants to make you suffer, it will throw the flies at you. Just power on through, take the hit, and fingers crossed you've got enough health for the rest of the challenge. There are only four jet streams to go through here, and then you're on to the next platform. And we're on to stage 10, where you're avoiding the lava again, but as a fork this time. Fling your hat on the first fork, and then line yourself up for the next. Just before you hit it, fling your cap again to possess it. Pull the left joy-con back, and then wait until the moving fork comes over to the left before letting it fly, launching you forward, and then you fling cappy again. Then it's just one more flick before the last platform. When you land on solid ground again, head down the green pipe. Stage 11, hedgehogs and fire rings. Welcome to my least favorite part of the whole challenge, the hedgehogs. But there's a way to make things a lot easier as long as your cappy aim is true. Whatever you do, try and avoid hitting any of the firing machines because doing so will start a chain reaction that can make your life very difficult indeed. Get onto the first platform and go to the top right hand corner. First aim to the left and take out all those hedgehogs. Then move to the bottom right hand corner and aim up to take out those spiky monsters. When it all gets a bit frantic, go back up to the top right hand and aim down. Stay in that spot as the platform turns the corner, but as the hedgehogs start to spawn in, Run to what is now the top right hand corner and aim down. Then just keep flinging Cappy until the platform reaches the end and you can leap up safely out of the fog and away from the hedgehogs. Stage 12, Birds and Swings. Now it's time for Pocchio to shine, the little extending beak bird from the Bowser Kingdom. Jump to the first swinging board and press Y to poke in. You don't have to keep holding Y because you can start preparing your fling then. Wait until the board swings to the right and aligns with the next one before you jump and poke again. Then fling yourself up the board along the rock face. Fling yourself up to the top as fast as you can because if you get hit by any of the other swinging boards you'll fall. Stage 13. Mario and Donkey Kong. For stage 13, it's all gone a bit old school. It's a massive 2D section where Mario has to go up against Donkey Kong and his rolling barrels. Sound familiar? Head right, leap over the flaming barrels and get yourself over the incoming rollers. Keep heading right until you hit the second moving platform and jump on board, as it will give you a better position to attack Donkey. Go under the yellow blocks and only jump up to hit them with your head when Donkey Kong is grounded. Do it four times and he's down, leaving you to escape through the gap that opens below into the green tunnel. Stage 14. Bowser and Boulders. 
Stage 14 might make you panic and think you've got to face Bowser himself because of that big portrait of him at the end of the corridor. But thankfully, you've just got to be Bowser instead, and the game gives you the full six hearts of health again for this section. Head through the portrait, become your spike shell nemesis, and then smash through the rocks ahead. Work your way up the platform, dodging left and right to avoid the boulders. Turn left and bounce across the platforms with more boulders. There's no trick to doing it apart from a bit of luck, but you can attack the incoming boulders if you want. Keep going until you get to the section with the blocks. This second to last section is the trickiest, as it sees you attacking your way through a mass of stone blocks. We just smashed our way through, but the best option is to attack a block, then turn and hit the ball coming behind you, rinse and repeat. The last section is fairly easy if you just keep to the left of centre until you're on the third platform. Then you can move into the middle a little more, smash through the last set of blocks, and then run to freedom. Stage 15, electric messages. There's just one more section to go and it can't actually kill you unless you press the wrong button and send Mario hurtling to his death. Don't do that. Instead, just move along the electricity cables and read the sweet message. And then you're all out of the danger, at last. Give yourself a pat on the back, mop your brow sweat and have a chocolate biscuit. For all that, you earn yourself a lovely little exchange with Cappy as you frog jump up the tower. Uh -huh. But also, you'll get a multi-moon and a very special outfit, the invisibility hat. As to what you'll use it for, we're still trying to work that out, but it's kind of cool, right? So that's how to beat the Darker Side Challenge in Super Mario Odyssey, let us know if you do it and get the invisibility hat for yourself. Click the boxes on the left for more content from us. And don't forget to hit the big button in the middle to subscribe for more gaming news, reviews, previews, features, tips and guides from us here at GamesRadar Plus. <laughs>